morning. Welcome back to the channel. We get a ton of messages and emails and messages on Instagram and comments on videos about how we started homesteading and where to begin. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. How to have a homestead or how to homestead. I put together a list of what I feel are the most important things to keep in mind when you want to start homesteading. The things that I wish people had told me or things that I wish that I knew when I started homesteading. The number one thing that I wish I had known when I started homesteading or I wish that someone had told me or that maybe I spent more time researching was to be realistic. And by be realistic, I mean be realistic in what your expectation is. Consider where you are right now. How much space do you have? Where do you live? Do you live in a house? Do you live in an apartment? Do you have property? Do you have a small backyard? Do you have a big backyard? These are all things that you need to keep in mind when you're trying to plan your journey to homesteading. It's great to think that we wanna have all the stuff up front. We want the farm, we want the animals, we want the big garden, and that's great. But you need to be realistic in what you can actually accomplish right now where you are. Just because you live in an apartment or you live in a condo or you live in town and you only have a small backyard, that doesn't mean that you can't still homestead. Which brings me to my next point. You need to figure out what homesteading means to you. Because homesteading can mean a variety of different things. It really depends who you ask. For me, homesteading is trying to be a little bit more self-sufficient, a little less reliant on the store, being mindful of what we're eating, being mindful of how our food is grown, and really just appreciating the fact that we are able to be in control of the food that we're growing, the food that we're eating, and basically the way that we can provide for our family. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need to know how to grow food and you need to know how to preserve the food that you've grown. That is not necessarily what homesteading means, unless that's what it means to you. If I tell you what homesteading means to me, and then I ask the guy down the street what homesteading means to them, we're probably going to give you a different answer. So you need to figure out what your interpretation of homesteading means. And then once you figure out what your interpretation of homesteading means, then you can figure out a plan on how to get there. Which brings me to my next point. Planning is essential. Planning is so important when it comes to homesteading and that's for a variety of reasons. It's very hard to be successful when you're not planning around homesteading. You won't be as successful if you don't plan what you're going to do. You can't just say, oh, I want to have a garden and then at the last minute throw some seeds in the ground because that is not how gardening works and that is not how homesteading gardening works either. Lists are your friend. Lists are your friend and I cannot stress that enough. I make lists all the time. I make daily lists. I make lists for the year. I make lists for the months. I have a book full of just lists. And lists are important because lists show you what you want to get done. And then there's a sense of accomplishment as you're crossing things off your list. So for example, I want to get into gardening. So I'm going to make a gardening list and on my gardening list, I'm going to put how big does my area need to be? What does my family eat? What kind of soil do I need? Am I able to grow the food that I want to grow in the climate I'm in? Those things would be on my list of gardening. And then I would research each point and then I would be able to come up with a better plan on how to execute the things that I want. If I'm gonna grow lemon trees, that's fabulous. But here in Canada, I don't have the climate to grow a lemon tree where we are. It's cold for six months of the year. So that brings me back to point number one, which is be realistic. So you need to be realistic with your planning while you're making your lists. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Oh my gosh, that sounds overwhelming. I need to be realistic in my planning and then I also need to start researching what it is that I want to plan to do. But guess what? The internet is your friend and if you have social media, that's even better. There are a variety of groups on Facebook and Instagram that I'm a part of that are specifically for learning how to homestead, learning how to garden. I'm in some beekeeping groups. I'm in some maple syrup groups. I'm in some gardening groups. I'm in some composting groups. I'm in chicken groups. I'm in dairy groups. I'm in pretty much every group that you could ever think of that would be on the internet. And the reason I'm in all these groups is because that is free information. It's free information. So it would be absolutely silly not to take advantage of the free information. The people in those groups are willing to share their information with you for free. And you know what the best thing about those groups is? Everybody is willing to give up the information to help other people out because homesteading is about 
building a community. So going onto these groups is great because everybody is willing to answer all those embarrassing questions that you feel you don't want to ask. I use beekeeping groups on a regular basis. I'm only in my fourth year of beekeeping, so I do not know everything there is to know. I don't even know a fraction of what there is to know. So I go into those groups on a regular basis every season and ask questions that I should probably already know the answer to, but I don't feel bad asking in these groups because those people that are in those groups are happily willing to just give you the information that you need and watch you succeed and do better. So I highly recommend you finding those groups, joining as many as you can, and reading everything that people post in there. And also posting any question that you have because somebody in there maybe won't have posted that question, but I guarantee that they're sitting at their phone or their computer hoping that somebody else asks the question that they want to know the answer to but are too afraid to ask. Another great resource is talking to your friends. So if you have friends that homestead or friends that have farms or friends maybe that just even can food, those are great resources to have because most of the time they're willing to help you out in exchange for nothing because they want you to be able to do the same things that they're doing. I get tons of messages from my friends about how to garden, what do I feed my chickens, when are you planting this, when do I start my seedlings inside, what do I do with garlic, basically anything you can think of. I get questions like that all the time and I happily give the information to my friends because I want my friends to be able to experience the same thing that I'm experiencing. Homesteading is a community. Everyone supports each other, everybody helps everybody out, and everybody wants everyone to do well. got off our property at the cabin so there were some cedar trees that fell down in that storm a couple years ago and we use those as part of our fencing which helps save money as well also with the fencing we went with two by three boards for our goat fencing instead of two by four that's mine and that saved a little bit of money too two by threes are a little bit more cost effective than two by fours and they do the job just fine for us for keeping the goats in. So making little adjustments like that really do help to save money in the long run. Getting things for free for your homestead is a feeling I cannot describe. This gate right here, I was given by a coworker. She didn't need it anymore. And I had the perfect use for it because we needed a gate for our goats. Purchasing a gate for your goat fence or your pig fence can be hundreds of dollars. This gate cost me nothing. I baked her a loaf of bread in exchange for the gate. And while we're on the topic of budgeting and saving money, we actually got this goat hut for free. It cost us nothing. The only thing that it cost us was a little bit of time to go take it down, bring it home, and then set it back up again. Goat feeders can cost quite a bit of money. This goat feeder cost us zero dollars. We used an old pallet that somebody gave us for free, and then we had a little piece of wire left over from when we did fencing that was going to be scrap. It, the piece of wire was going to be scrapped, but we decided to put it on the front of this pallet and make a hay feeder for the goats. If homesteading teaches you anything when it comes to budgeting, it's that you can pretty much create something out of nothing. Recycling products and reusing items or repurposing them is one of the big ways that you're going to be able to save money and stick to your budget when it comes to homesteading. Another really important thing to consider when it comes to budgeting and spending your money homesteading is that for us, everything has to give something back. Unfortunately, homesteading doesn't work when you just have things just to have them and you're not really getting anything back out of them. It's expensive to fence animals in. It's expensive to feed animals. The vet bills are expensive. Basically every area of it can be expensive when it comes to animals. So it's really important to keep in mind that the things that you're putting your time and effort and money into are gonna give you something back in return. And that's just for me. 
I'm not saying every home sitter is like that, but that's for me. If I'm putting my time, my energy, and my money into something, I would expect that it's gonna give me something back in return. This is Lily. So this is Penny's second kid, I think, maybe third. So typically if we have bucklings, we'll get them disbudded, we'll get their shots and everything up to date, and then we usually sell them. When it comes to the dolings, I like to hang on to them because we can breed them and we can also milk them. And now that I make soap all the time, goat milk soap is something that I want to get into. And in order to make goat milk soap, I need goat milk. And the only way I'm going to get goat milk is from female goats. So I'll likely keep her and that will put our total up to four females. And then we'll change out the male that we have to keep all the genetics nice and clean. So for us, we actually met somebody who had the same breed of goats that we had. And she had suggested that maybe we trade male goats so that I can bring in different genes from her goats to here and she can bring in different genes from my goat to her goats. So that's another way that you can save money. You network, you make contacts, you make connections, and then you end up bartering. Bartering is another great way to save money. I barter all the time with honey, with eggs, with syrup, with duck eggs, with chicks, with ducklings. You can pretty much make a trade for anything, especially make a trade for anything with someone who's a homesteader because homesteaders are all about trading good quality products with other homesteaders. when homesteading is that you basically need to stay at least one season ahead all the time. And what I mean by that is in the winter you should be thinking about the spring, in the spring you should be thinking about the summer, in the summer you should be thinking about the fall, and in the fall you should be thinking about the winter. Well really you should be thinking about the winter all the time especially if you heat with wood because that's one thing you need to do many many seasons in advance so if you heat with wood you should be thinking about wood the year before you actually need it so for this winter that's just ending we need to start thinking about wood that we need for next winter like we need to be a year ahead and the same is true when it comes to seeds you need to be thinking about seeds for your garden in February and we're not gardening until May so some of my seeds are already started inside and some of them start as early as January hatching is another thing we need to start way before we actually want the chicks a chicken usually is between four and six months old before it starts laying an egg so if you think about that when do we want our chickens to start laying eggs well we want our chickens to start laying eggs in the spring which means when do we want to start hatching it takes three weeks to hatch a chick out of an egg which means we need at least three weeks, plus the four to six months that it takes for them to mature to be able to produce the egg. So at the very minimum, you need five months. So if you want your chickens to start laying eggs in April, you need to count back five months from that, and that is when you need to start hatching. So typically people only hatch in the spring. I tend to hatch pretty much whenever I want. So I hatched all through the winter. These ones I only hatched about two months ago, so they're not going to be ready to lay for a bit. But these ones I hatched in January, I think, or maybe even December. So these ones are going to be ready to lay this season. Now you also can buy birds that are already laying if you choose not to hatch your own or you forget or your planning wasn't right and now you don't have any eggs for the springtime. You can also buy birds that are already laying and a great place to look is on Kijiji or any other buy and sell page that you might have in your area. Of course, hatching your own birds is gonna be the cheapest way to do it because it's not gonna cost you anything. Your chickens are already laying eggs, you collect the eggs, you incubate them and boom, you have your own chickens. I mean, that's the most cost effective way to do it. There's plenty of ways to go about it. It's really all about what feels best for you. And speaking of hatching, our ducks are starting to lay again, which means I'll be collecting their eggs and I'll be incubating some of these and I'll be hashing out some ducklings. Ducks only lay for a specific time of the year. They don't lay like a chicken does, so their, their laying time is significantly shorter than a chicken. So I only have a couple months of collecting duck eggs, which means these are things that I also need to be planning ahead for. I know typically between March
March and April is when my ducks are going to start laying and by June they've pretty much stopped completely so I know that I need to be prepared in that time to have space in the incubator to make sure that I can hatch these ducklings out because this is one of the ways that we bring in income on our homestead. I hatch the ducklings and I sell the ducklings. For some reason ducklings are hard to come by down here so people are willing to wait for them and I typically sell out of ducklings almost immediately once they're posted. So this is another thing that I need to be prepared for well in advance. I know when I'm hatching my chickens, I can plan from three weeks when my chickens go in. I know that I've got to start collecting my eggs. You don't want to collect eggs more than seven days away from when you're going to be incubating them. So I typically will plan to hatch my ducks after the last hatch of chickens. So the eggs that I have in the incubator right now are going to be done in two weeks, which means seven days from when my chickens hatch, that's when I'm going to start collecting my eggs. Because that way I can hang on to my eggs for seven days and in the seven days my chicks will be hatched, which means I'll have space in the incubator to put my duck eggs in and I won't be wasting any time between hatching my chickens, waiting to collect my eggs and then setting my duck eggs. And you can see my eggs are fertile. Another thing you need to think of when it comes to planning ahead is thinking about when your crops go in. So garlic, for example, is something that's planted in the fall. Now you can do a spring plant or a fall plant. I typically do the fall one. I feel it works significantly better for me. I've not had good luck with doing a spring plant of garlic. So that's another thing you need to be prepared for. I know that usually by Thanksgiving weekend, that's when I need to start getting my garlic in the ground. And by the end of October, it needs to be in the ground for sure. So that's something that I have to think about in advance. I need to think about how many garlic I want to plant this year. And then I also have to make sure that I have the appropriate stuff to mulch them once I've planted them. Another thing to consider is really trying not to take on more than you can handle. I like to think about all the things that I can have or all the things that I can do or all the things I can grow or raise or produce, but then I often forget the amount of time and effort and money and resources that go into executing all the things that I want to do. We camp a lot, so that was a huge thing last season. We needed someone at our house to be taking care of our animals, and we didn't even have as many animals then as we do now. You need to make sure that you have someone available to help you out when you're gone. Is someone going to feed your animals? Is someone going to water your garden? You know, if you're doing syrup, is someone going to empty your sap buckets when you're gone? There's a lot of things to think about when you start to take on way more responsibility and way more tasks than you actually have time for. Think about what makes sense for your family and the lifestyle that you have currently. Does having all these animals make sense for your lifestyle? Does growing a huge garden make sense for where you are right now in life. Another thing that I struggled with personally was wanting to grow everything. I wanted to grow everything. And I still do that sometimes where I still want to grow everything, but I've gotten a lot better with reeling myself back in, thinking about what makes sense for us. When you're first starting to garden, it can be very exciting, but it can also be very overwhelming. And when you plant your seeds for the first time and you see something come up, it really just makes you want to plant everything. Learning to garden and mastering one thing at a time is incredibly beneficial and also will save your sanity. Doing too much at once, especially when you don't really know what you're doing or you're just starting out, is an excellent way to fail. And while failure is definitely part of homesteading, it's very discouraging right off the bat when you are not prepared really for what you're doing in the first place. When I expanded our garden, a lot of stuff failed and it was very discouraging, but I wanted to plant everything because I wanted to have a market garden and I wanted to sell things and I wanted to do all this stuff and I wanted to grow enough to can all these things. And by doing that, it all went sideways. I harvested quite a bit, but not as much as I was hoping to harvest, which then became disappointing, which then becomes discouraging and then turns people off of wanting to actually homestead in the first place. So don't take on more than you can manage. Be realistic in what it is that you want to be doing. If it's gardening and you want to plant a garden, only plant a garden for your family. And only plant a garden consisting of things that you and your family are going to eat. There is absolutely no better waste of time than growing stuff and putting effort and time into all this stuff that's going to go to waste, never get eaten, 
or you won't be able to do anything with it. I highly, highly urge that if you are gardening to really think about what it is that you and your family eat and put your time and effort into that. And speaking of failing, another thing that I wasn't really prepared for, or I wasn't really informed of, I guess, is that there is going to be loss. And I'm not talking that your garden didn't work out or your seeds didn't germinate, or you collected your first eggs and you dropped them on the ground and they broke. I'm talking about loss of life. That happens on a homestead. The first year that I had bees, I lost my entire hive over the winter and it was devastating. We've also lost chickens, We've lost roosters, we've lost chicks, we've lost them to predators, we've lost them hatching in the eggs, they've gotten stuck in the eggs and they haven't been able to get out. We've lost piglets. One of our goats had a stillborn a few weeks ago. Loss is inevitable and loss of life is inevitable too, but it's something that you need to be prepared for because most of the time it's not your fault. And if it is your fault, you're gonna learn from it immediately and it's never gonna happen again. But it's bound to happen and that's just part of life, unfortunately. Annie, come on. Another thing to consider is slowing down. And what I mean by slowing down is you need to make a list and you need to prioritize the things that are on the list and just do one thing at a time. So for example, it's March right now and I know that I don't have a garden made up yet. I know that my chicken gate here needs to be fixed and I know that I need to lift up the coop and add a new floor into it. Well, my priority right now is that my potatoes are typically gonna be going in the ground at the beginning of April, which means my gate that has been functioning the way it's been functioning for the last five months is not a priority. The chicken coop needing a floor in it is also not a priority right now. They're still priorities, but they're not more important than getting the potatoes in the ground because otherwise I'm gonna miss my window of time for potatoes. The gate can be fixed in May. The gate can be fixed in June. The floor in the coop can be fixed in July but the potatoes need to go in in April. So you need to prioritize what's important. And after that, focus on just mastering one thing at a time. If you wanna grow 15 different vegetables, that is totally fine. But if you wanna grow one thing very well and the other one's relatively okay, then focus on the one thing that you wanna grow well. For example, we eat a lot of tomato sauce. So growing tomatoes is a priority and growing them correctly is a priority because that's something that we use a ton of throughout the year. Growing eggplant, not a huge priority. We eat it, we like it, we'll eat it when we pick it. But my focus in that situation would be how do I optimize my tomato output versus my eggplant output? Because eggplant isn't as important as the tomatoes in my situation. <laughs> Probably one of the most important things to consider in all of this is not to compare yourself to any other homestead you see. There's absolutely no point in doing that unless you want to discourage yourself. It's not going to help you feel any better about your situation. The very first garden I ever had was made of four two by fours and not even four two by fours, three two by fours actually, because one of them was cut in half. So it was four by two. That's it. I planted like four things. I remember being on Instagram or Facebook or something and seeing all these photos come up that looked super curated and just perfect. And I remember thinking, how the heck am I ever gonna have that when all I have right now is a tiny little garden that has lettuce in it and like three tomato plants. It's just not reasonable to compare yourself to that. But also if you are comparing yourself to that, they started somewhere and they had a day one just like you had a day one. And I had a day one, just like some of the people that I follow on social media had a day one. There are people out there with way better farm setups, homesteading setups, gardening situations, fencing for their animals, maple syrup setups, like you name it. There are way more experienced people out there with way more efficient setups than we have. And that's fine because we're working towards being more efficient and more sustainable every single season. And the only way we're gonna get there is by continuing to work 
continuing to fail and then continuing to make improvements every season from here on out. Everybody has their own version of homesteading, like I said before. So to sum everything up, basically you need to figure out what it is that homesteading means to you. Be realistic in your planning and your budgeting. Don't compare yourself to everybody else. Don't take on more than you can handle and really focus on what makes sense for you and your family. There are so many resources out there, like I said. And in fact, when I started homesteading, my best resource was the public library around the corner from my house. Every week, me and the kids would go there on Tuesdays. We'd take out different books, read them throughout the week, and then exchange them the following Tuesday. And when I first started going to the library, all I took out was homesteading books. So I took out homesteading for beginners, something about backyard chicken keeping, fermenting, beekeeping, canning, how to homestead on a quarter acre, the beginner's guide to homesteading, pretty much everything you could ever think would be in a book. I found every single book that the library had and I took them out week after week after week. The information is out there and it does not have to cost money to find it. And while we're talking about other resources for information, YouTube is an excellent source of information. Ask your friends, ask your family, read some books, go on the internet, join some groups, visit your library. The information is out there. You just have to go and get it. That wraps up this video. Hopefully some of that information was helpful to you. Feel free to follow us on Instagram for any sort of homesteading tips or advice. I do like a lot of recipes and reels on how to do things. For example, canning, baking, cooking, growing stuff, planting seeds, etc. So you will find lots of helpful information there. And be sure to join your local Facebook groups specific to the areas of information that you're looking for. So chickens, bees, syrup, gardening, etc. Because that's all free information and it's incredibly helpful. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.